everyone. I am Imelda from the Campaign Product Team, and here with me today is Ilan Freed, our Senior Product Manager, and our Product Ambassadors, Mohamed Bashinda for Arabic, George Fadoub for French, and Anthony Tavango for Swahili. We have different language support available for live interpretations, and our slides will be available in Arabic, French, and Swahili text. Today, we will share what kind of work is being undertaken by the foundation product team and how communities can benefit from these new campaign projects. And we hope for you to learn more about the newly developed feature of the event center, which is the event registration system. And we also hope to gather feedback from you on how to further improve the registration tool so it can be potentially incorporated into our later releases. Next slide. Uh, just a brief background, uh, the campaign product team is a software and product development team focused on building tools for campaign organizers. Our main goal is to build and improve the features in the campaign's ecosystem. For experienced organizers, we want to simplify their workflows and provide more powerful tools. And for new organizers, we want to make it easier to become effective and long-term organizers. We hope that, that we will see more campaign organizers, campaign participants, campaign events, and campaign contributions with higher retention rates for organizers and higher retention rates for participants. Next. A very vital part of our team is our product ambassadors. They help us conduct multilingual outreach as we wanted to focus both on language and region. Organizers around the movement speak a diverse range of languages, and some do not speak English. Campaign events are also in a range of languages. Some organizers have often felt overlooked by WMF, especially the non-English speakers. So it is our team's goals, together with the product ambassadors, to share our vision widely, gather and receive feedback from organizers in these local communities, and also to recruit testers for our first project and create a community of organizers who we can collaborate with over time. Next. Our vision in general is to build a robust long-term support for Wikimedia campaign events. To make this possible, we plan to build the event center. This platform will focus on improving and simplifying workflows related to top pain points in organizing and event participation. This platform will have an organizer side and a participant side. The organizer side will provide the tools and resources that organizers need to create and manage impactful event campaigns. Uh, the participant side will provide the guidance and support that any participants will need to meaningfully engage in any Wikimedia campaigns. Overall, this platform will be a modular, which means the features can be separated and recombined based on the special needs of a wiki or a community. Also extensible, which means that features can be added over time by, by our team, other teams, or any volunteer developers. And for our first priority, uh, to improve the organizing experience, we work on the on wiki registration for events, uh, the event registration tool. And uh, for organizer, we hope that this new feature, uh, the campaign organizers will save time. They will no longer need to develop any alternative registration solutions, and they will be able to collect better data on campaign participants, their needs, and respecting their participants' privacy. Also, on the participant side, Uh, campaign participants will be able to join campaigns with minimal effort, and their first point of contact in the campaign will be fun and inspiring. Uh, we hope that participation for events around the movement will be easy, even if you're just a new editor. So I will give the floor to Alana for the demonstration. Hello, everyone. My name is Alana. I'm the product manager for the campaigns team. Um, before I get started, I'll give a little more background also on these slides. As you see, they're multilingual. These slides came from a previous office hours that we had, um, and they include the languages that we have product ambassadors on our team represented. So you'll see that they're in English, French, Arabic, and Swahili. We also have some of the ambassadors in the chat giving a little more context in other languages as well. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give a demo of what we've built so far. 
So feel free to join along with me if you would like um, and try out some of these yourself. So I'm gonna be alternating between these slides and doing a live demo. Um, but one thing I should share is this, what I'm demoing today is what we call V0. So we call it V0 because it's very new. There's a lot of things we still want to do to improve it. There's also, um, some of these improvements are features, others are smaller things like you know bug fixes and things like that. But the reason why we built this early version called V0 is we wanted to get feedback early on. So we know what's working for people, what isn't, and we can incorporate that in our next version, which we're calling V1. And we'll talk more about V1 at the end of the presentation, but I'll first demo what we have today. Um, so as a starting point, uh, V0 is on beta wiki or the beta cluster. It's not on any live wikis yet. That's because again, we want to get feedback. We want to learn more before we think about deploying to any live wikis. So as a first step, if you wanna go along with me, um, you would go to this URL. Oops, I'm gonna go back. Okay. And I'll show how it works right here. So um, if you already have an account on the beta cluster, that's great. Otherwise, you can go ahead and create one. I'll share the URL in our chat for anyone who wants to join along with me. So if you're creating an account, and again, um, you need to create an account because your normal Wikimedia account, uh, let's say for Wikipedia or you know any other live projects, wouldn't necessarily work in this case. Um, so I'm just gonna create a test account. And then I'll create password right now. So again, feel free to join me. And now the account has been created. So the steps that I just went through again were you go to beta wiki, you create a test account. So once you've done that, and also, by the way, I should mention if anyone's following following along with me and they want me to slow down because they need to complete a step first, feel free to let me know in the chat. Um, I see don't know how to use the link can't copy neither. Um, maybe perhaps someone who's an ambassador or who's a part of our team can provide a bit more context in the chat about how people in the call can create an account on the beta cluster. Um, so once you have created an account, I'll show the next step now. So we want to create an event page. So what is an event page? Event pages have existed for a long time. This isn't a new concept, right? So what's different here is you want to create an event page in the event namespace. So any wiki that would have the campaign events extension. So in this case, beta cluster wiki has the campaign events extension enabled, would have the event namespace. Now, the reason why it's useful to create the event in the event namespace is we then know that this is an event page that's separate, separate from say an article page or a user page. It gives us that specific identification. Um, so the way you do that is you type in event colon and the name of your event in the search bar. So just like how you create any other wiki page, you can search for the page, see that's a red link, and then click on it in order to be able to make it an event page. So I'll demo this right now. And again, feel free to join me. So let's say, um, and I live in Brooklyn. So let's say I want to do an edit-a-thon of Brooklyn. Maybe I'll call it Brooklyn edit-a-thon. I click this red link here. And now I'm going to create an event page just like I would any other event page. Um, so in real life, of course, if this wasn't a demo, there'd probably be a lot of time and effort that I put into making my event page look correct. Um, but because this is just a demo, I want to do a really quick event page. So I might write something like, please join this edit-a-thon um, that focuses on the history oops, of Brooklyn, New York. Okay, so now I can publish the page.
And this is what brings us to the next step. So I see one question in the chat. How do I edit the event's name? So basically, you create the name of your event. So it's in the event namespace. So you do event colon, but after the colon, it is any name that you want. Of course, if there's a name that's already been used on the wiki, just like any other page, you wouldn't want to use that again. So you would pick a new event name. So for example, let's say you want your name to your event name to be called Women's History Editathon 2022. It would be event colon Women's History Editathon 2022. Okay. So now um, we've gone through the steps of add content to the event page and publish the event page. So the next thing I want to talk about is enabling registration. So when you're on the event page, there's two primary ways to enable registration, which I'll show right now. The reason why I can enable registration in the event page is I'm the organizer, I created the event. So in order to enable registration, and enable registration means that um, there's gonna be this header that allows people who are prospective participants to join the event. Um, so I could do that in two ways. Way one, which I'll show right now is a pop-up that you click on the event page. So you'll see a pop-up, it says enable registration. You can dismiss the pop-up if you don't want to, um, but if you dismiss it, there's a second way, which I will also show. So now let's go back to the event page. So I can either click here where it says enable registration and it brings me to a form, or if I dismissed it, I always have this option here, enable registration, which will bring me to the same place. So now let's talk about the next step, which is adding, oops, adding basic information about the event. So the next step is to fill out the form with event information. When complete, click enable registration. And then it's recommended to review your changes just to make sure that everything looks all right. Um, so I should also explain that this first part where you add information about the event, since it's V0, it's very basic information you add. But we know in the future that organizers will probably like to have a more complex or sophisticated way to talk about their event. So we'll be thinking about ways to improve this experience in the future as well. But for V0, this is what we have. So let's say, so Ready has a name of my event, and that's because, of course, I went from the event page directly to the form. Um, so let's say we have, I want the event to be on September 1st, and let's say I want it to end on September 6th. Um, and let's say I wanted to go from 14 or 2 p.m. Um, you, you'll probably see the Z here. So this is another, this is an example of something we want to fix in the next version. So right now for V0, because we wanted to build a very basic first version, um, you can just create events in UTC, which are currently represented as Z in MediaWiki. But our goal is to fix this in the future so the organizer can pick their time zone that they want for the event. It doesn't have to be UTC. And Z would not be represented and still it would show UTC. But for now, this is <laughs> what we have. Um, you can choose if it's an online event, an in-person event, or hybrid, online and in-person. I'll choose this so you can see both options. So meeting URL, this would be something like if there's a Zoom um, or a Google Hangout meeting, this is where you can specify it. Uh, you can add the country. This is also something we want to improve in the future with how you add the address. Um, but for V0, this is how it works. So maybe I'll say it's at 500. Jimmy Road, and then here I can do the group chat. So this could be something like if there's a Telegram or WhatsApp or any other sort of, you know, off wiki chat, this is where you could specify it. Um, and both the meeting URL and the group chat invite would be something that's viewed to people once they register as participants. Before that, they can't see it. So then you click enable registration. Okay, so now registration is enabled. Participants can now register on the event page.
So uh, I saw one message say my voice is muted. I hope I, people can hear me okay. If other people cannot hear me, please uh, let us know in the chat so I can fix that. Um, so basically you see the top here, it says online and in-person event. It lets us know the date and time. So far, nobody has registered for the event yet. Uh, if I click more details, it can also show the location. Since I'm the organizer, I see the link for the video call. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go the other side and show how someone can join event as a participant. Now, if you're following along, if you want to join an event as a participant, there's a few ways you could do that. You can, of course, join my event and I'll share the URL. Um, but you can also search for many other events by going to special all pages. And then after that, you want to look for pages that are in the event namespace. Um, so there's many events you can also search by going like this, but the idea is you basically want to search for an event that you did not create and enable registration for so you can be a participant. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share a different window uh, where I am a different user. So I'm registering for this event. So I am now going to see, share this. So oh, what I'll do actually instead, since I think I chose the wrong one, is maybe I'll just choose, an, what I'll do is I'll choose an event that I just did not create myself and see if I, one of them has registration enabled. Yep, okay. So for this one right here, I can register for the event. And now I'm listed as a participant. So Tommy456, that is me. Now I can also choose to leave the event by clicking on the trash can right here. And then I am no longer a member of the event. Someone else joined, very cool. But if I ever want to join again, oh, but before I join again, let me demo how the join link doesn't show if I'm not registered. So when I click more details, I need to register, it says here, to view the event link, right? Now, when I register again, I can see that the link is right here. Okay, so to go over the steps again, for anyone who's following along to join as a participant, you can search for events by either clicking event colon in the search bar and a lot of events will come up. You can also go to special all pages, which gives you access to all the events. If you look in the event namespace in your search, then you want to go to the event page and click register for event, which will automatically register you. Then the next step, which I also demoed, is canceling registration as a participant. So to do that, you click on the trash can and then you're unregistered. If you want to register again, it's as simple as clicking register for a bet. So I just demoed how a participant removed themselves. Now I'm gonna show how an organizer would remove a participant. So sometimes organizers want to remove participants. Maybe it's a trust and safety issue. So for example, maybe someone who joined an event is someone that the organizer knows has caused issues in the past and they think it's not a wise decision for trust and safety reasons for this person to attend. Maybe the person's having trouble removing themselves and they ask the organizer to do it for them. Um, whatever the reason may be, we wanted to give the organizers that power to make that decision. So the way you do that as an organizer is there's, um, instead of register for event, there's a button that says manage event. So you click on the button that says manage event then you'll see a view of the participants who registered for your event. You can select one, you can select some, you can select all, and from there you choose to remove them. So I'll demo that right now. So let's see if anyone has joined my Brooklyn event. If not, then I'll have some. <laughs> 
Oh, many people have. Amazing. So whoever I remove, <laughs> uh, it is nothing against you personally. It is just for the demo. So I click manage event and I'll remove Imelda. So to do that, I can click her name. I could click all, but I don't want to do that. I just want to remove one. So to do that, I click here and I remove. And the participant is now removed from the event. So another thing you can do as an organizer is edit the registration information. So for example, maybe I added some incorrect information into the registration. Uh, question, what if the participant still shows up? That's always a risk potentially. Um, so I think that'd be an interesting discussion for us to talk about afterward, because I think there's a lot of ways to think about that. Um, so please hold that question and let's see if we have time. Um, so to edit the registration information, I'll show uh, there's, Two main ways to get to edit, but one way from here, so is I go to edit. Another way is I have a my events list. See these dots, you can click it here and also go to edit event. So the my events would be a list of all the events you have organized. Um, so here, let's say it's not 500 Jimmy Road. I made a mistake. It's 550 Jimmy Road. So I can just make the change and then I click edit registration. Now I can go back to the event page and I see it is now 550 Jimmy Road. Uh, question, so only the participants see the list. No, um, for V0, we have it very basic in that organizers and participants and just the general public of anyone who's on wiki pages can see the list of people who join. And that's inspired by a lot of on wiki registration now where you can see who joined events. But we also do know that some organizers are interested in confidential registration. Um, so that means that someone registers for an event and only the organizers see them. Um, for that, that's something we're planning to look into for a later release, but um, it's not something that's currently available in this version. So that's edit. Now let's go to open and close registration. So when you create um, or when you enable registration on event page, it's automatically open, but perhaps you want to close an event registration. So maybe you know, there's a certain number of people you want to register, reach the capacity, whatever it may be. When you close registration, that means new people can't register. So the people who registered in the past, the registration is preserved, but new people can't come and join. If you close that registration, you can open it again, but um, it's, your, it's your choice what you want to do really. So I'll show now how to close. Um, so you can go to my events or edit, and then, if you go through my events, you click the three dots and you'll see if it's a closed event, you'll see open registration. And if it's an open event, you'll see closed registration. You can also do it through edit. So I'll show both my versions. So let's go back to manage event. So we saw here these dots. You can choose here to close an event or open. Similarly, um, if you go to edit, the event status is open, you can change it to closed. If it's closed, that means that the registration header at the top that says register will no longer appear to participants. So feel free to also go back to my event page and if you haven't registered already, you'll see you no longer can. Okay. So now delete registration. So delete registration is very simple for V0. So I'm not going to complete the deletion process because right now we only have the ability to delete registration, but we haven't built in the ability yet to restore it. And I don't want to delete this because I've been using this to teach you all how the product works. So I think it's more useful to keep it up, but I'll show how you go about it, do it. So delete registration, you're gonna have the three dots 
and you click delete event and that will go ahead and delete it. So if I wanted to, I click delete event, I'm going to cancel, I'm not going to confirm this. But if I truly wanted to delete, I would click delete. So those are the basics of V0 and how it works. Um, we are also, though, very aware of the fact that V0 is just the beginning. There's a lot more we want to build for event registration, and there's a lot more we want to build for events in general beyond registration. So Melda now is going to talk about some of our future plans, and then we'll open it up to questions. And um, thank you all. Right. Uh, thank you, Alana. So what's next from our team? Uh, coming in in October on MetaWiki, organizers can message their participants via email or their talk pages. Also, integration with the programs and events dashboard and support for multiple organizers per one event. Also coming in in January and also on MetaWiki, uh, registration for sub-events, for example, uh, events that has two locations, uh, we're in uh, events that has uh, in-person gathering or virtual uh, participation. Uh, also confidential registration, wherein participants, uh, participations of uh, volunteers can only be seen by organizers, not by everyone who joined the event. And also optional questions that an organizer can ask participants. For example, organizers can send questions to their participants during their registration. Also, for our next steps, uh, first, we would love if you can test the event registration feature on MetaWiki. Share your feedback on our channels. You may use our talk pages on Meta or the feedback form that we are going to share in the chat. You can also subscribe to our newsletter to receive updates on our projects and any announcement on testing and version improvements. Also, you may join our Telegram group, which is a community of Wikimedia organizers. So now we are going to answer your questions. Amir, do I see your hand up or is that just? It looks like your hands up. Uh, yes, you see my hand up. Hi, uh, excellent presentation, thank you. Um, um, you mentioned at some point that it's possible to see a list of events on special all pages, uh, which makes sense because these are just pages. Um, is it also possible to see all the available events on something like a calendar grid? Great question. Uh, so this is actually a future project plan for us. So after we do the event registration project, we want to do what we're just calling now the event page creation project. So right now, um, for some organizers, they already have workflows in place for how to create event pages and feel rather comfortable with it. For others, it's a lot of work and a lot of maintenance. So we would like to, just how you saw with that form, you can add some basic information for registration. You can think about it as sort of an extension of that. You add more information that is, you know, I think useful for you to share for participants, and then it can generate an event page without you having to do stuff with like wiki text or templates or whatever yourself. So what we imagine the future is when you're creating the event page, or if you're not using the event creation tool, there can be other ways to do it, but there's a way to specify if you want your event page to end up on a future calendar of events. So you don't have to say, manually create some sort of calendar yourself, there'll be some sort of infrastructure that we create in the future around that calendar. That's in the future, so we don't know a lot of the details yet, but what we imagine and we hope is that make it easier for people to find out about what's going on at any time, and they can even apply search filters for things like topic area or location, so they can find events that really excite them. I think Natasha is tracing her hand. Yeah. Um, will it be, maybe you answered the, the question already, but uh, I have trouble uh, understanding when it's uh, people speak very, very fast. So will it be linked to the events dashboard? Um, 
eventually or not? Another great question. So this is actually our plan for the next release. So we have another release that we're planning for roughly in October. We don't know the exact date because we just started this phase of the project. And of course, with software development, there's always unknown. So it's often hard to say at early stages, but we're planning for roughly October. And for this release, we want to have integration with the programs and events dashboard. And we're actually working directly with Sage Ross from Wiki Education to make this possible. So what we want is that if you as an organizer have created a dashboard instance, and you also are using our registration tool, if anyone registers for your event as a participant, their username can be automatically pushed to that dashboard event. So you wouldn't need to manually add usernames yourself or have the participants during the event add the names. Um, so in short, yes, it's in our plans in the next few months. Great, thank you. You're welcome. A techno, you can raise your question and then we'll go answer questions on the chat. Techno, would you like to ask your question? Uh, if not, maybe we can go to Gilbert. I see his hands up as well. Thank you, Irana. Uh, just to say thank you for having uh, think about this system because uh, it is very easy and. Uh, because uh, previously we have uh, been answering to questions of a uh, participant asking, please check if I have uh, been registered. And when we are organizing things, we have to check for messages and uh, answer and uh, check. And sometimes it was uh, uh, difficult to check how to, to see if someone have registered. But for now, it is easy just for a, a click. You, you see if you are, you are registered. And if for the second time you register, you, you click and you are informed that you are a, already a participant, you can't, you can't register for a second time. Uh, just to say thank you. Thank you for uh, having uh, think about this system. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. It's really appreciated. And um, that also reminds me what you said we heard from other organizers when we were doing research before this project began, which is that um, some organizers that use some tools, especially the tools where um, someone registers, but it's it's a private list that's not publicly shared. People don't remember sometimes that they registered, so they'll contact the organizers, and then the organizers okay. have extra work of essentially letting them know or not if they've registered already. <laughs> so this takes away some of that burden, hopefully. So it's, it's great to hear from you that you feel like it would. Very great. Very great. Thank you. One question in the chat from Jan. Will this replace the events in DIFF? Okay, the so diff for, calendar. yeah, the diff calendar. Um, so overall, with all our tools, I don't think we're aiming to replace anything. We understand that Wikimedia is a super complex ecosystem that has a lot of decentralized ways of managing things and determining what's best for different communities and different needs. So that's not our goal to replace the diff calendar. Uh, we our goal is though to work really closely with organizers, especially organizers that currently feel like a lot of the existing workflows aren't working for them and find solutions that can give them meaningful improvements so they feel like they can lead more impactful campaigns and so that they can do more of the work of actually organizing rather than dealing with technical hurdles. So when we do have the calendar project in the future, we'll also look into how we can complement whatever we do with what exists rather than trying to replace anything. And so I guess, too, if any of you have any thoughts or feedback around what would be the most useful way to provide some sort of calendar support, uh, feel free, even if we're not in that stage yet of doing the work ourselves because we haven't launched the project, feel free to share it because the earlier we get feedback, the earlier we can start thinking through some of these complexities.
I think we have one very good question on either pad. Will a future version include a functionality where you can have the event details sent to your email or added to your calendar? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, maybe, yeah, so another thing coming in October, we, <laughs> we made this slide very shortened, but there's more features actually that we're planning in the new release. And another one is confirmation email. So right now it's very simple. You register as a participant and that's it. You don't really get a confirmation email, um, but we know this is really important. So for the next release, uh, what we're looking into now is uh, after the, or the participant registers, if they have an email address associated with their account and they don't have anything in preferences where they said they don't wanna be emailed, so they allow email, then uh, we will have an automatic email sent to the participant, the organizer doesn't have to do anything and will have all that information, the event details sent to the participant so they can easily access it at any time through their email. I also see a question in the chat. Do you also plan to add a feature for newbies to create a wiki account through the registration tool? So yeah, so right now, let's say you want to join an event and you aren't logged in or you don't have an account yet. Um, the way it works is you can still see the register for event button. It's not that the call to registration is only for logged in users, but in order to complete registration, we have you log in. Right now it takes you to the login or sign up page. And then after you do that, it'll bring you back to the event page so you can easily sign up. Um, it's, but one thing we could consider in the future is ways we can improve that intermediary step when someone is either logging in or signing up to make it just um, more user-friendly. So let's say I want to sign up for, you know, the Brooklyn Edit-a-thon. Maybe there can be some sort of text that says, in order to complete your process of joining the Brooklyn Edit-a-thon, you know, please create a wiki account. And maybe there's even some sort of image or graphic that's like the logo for the event. So the user can really recognize, okay, I need to complete the process. Um, we haven't done that yet. Uh, but uh, please feel free to also share any suggestions for how you think we could make the initial account creation process more encouraging for newbies, because a high priority for us is we don't want people to essentially drop out because they have to log in or sign up. We want them to complete the process. So anything you think can make that more possible or encourage people to do those last steps, we really want to hear it. Another question, when is the expected time to start using the event planner? For that, I think it's spent the event calendar. Um, unfortunately, it's too early for us to say. So if I gave a date, it would probably be wrong. So I think what's better is um, to join our chat channels and our various modes of communication. So when we do have a better timeline, we can share that with you. So ways you can stay informed about our teamwork is you can join our subscription list. We send messages. Uh, they're usually bulk. We try to send a few things all at once about things that the team has going on um, every now and then uh, via mass message. So be on your user talk page about team updates. You can also watch our team page on MetaWiki. And if you do that, um, that's I think the best way to stay informed about the work we're doing. I should also mention, we have a Telegram group that's multilingual, that's for organizers. Um, it, it's not only a place for people to come together who are organizers who want to share resources, but it's also a place where we'll be sharing product updates as well. And you can directly talk to us as well as our product ambassadors who are um, available for French, Arabic or Swahili, as well as of course, English for any questions you may have. Someone asked for sharing links in the etherpad. Looks like I saw Melda nodding. So I guess that's coming up. Let's see if there's yeah. anything else. We already shared the links in either, but, uh, and Etherpad and also subscribers, please. And I saw that Accurate wrote well back. I love the new innovation about the registration tools. Thank you so much. Natasha, very interesting tool for UA organizing edit-a-thons. Um, so everyone who's sharing feedback, we would love to hear from 
more from you, essentially the feedback form. So I'll show you how the feedback form works as well. We want to know what's working, what's not working, because this is really the beginning. It's not the end. So if there's things you don't like, we want to know so we can find ways to improve it. So this link right here, which you can also see in the slides and I'll share again the chat, is a multilingual feedback form. You pick your language and then there's questions that you can answer. Um, some of the, que the questions are things like, what do you like? What do you not like? Would you use this? And here's the link again. And I will register for your, oh, so um, Natasha, the link you sent is in your event page. This is, um, it's kind of more like you could think about it as your folder or organizer of your events. So your event page, instead of saying special my events, it would have um, the name of your event. So if you send the link of your event page, I will register for your event as a participant. Jacob. Okay, so why didn't it show? Another thing you can do That's is what I wanted to. You can also go if you forgot the name, you can oh. go under user contributions and you should be able to find your event page. It's, it's event is a Genf. That, that's the name of the, I just put, posted play name of the event. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Thank you so much. Oh, I see. This is the name of the event. Okay. Okay, you now have two participants. Great. So now I can remove one of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Um, someone asked, how can I get the tool? So right now it's available for everyone in testing in the beta cluster. But in the future, we want, of course, for this to be a live wiki, not just on the beta cluster. Um, so we're aiming to release it on MetaWiki first. Um, there are a few reasons why, uh, but one of the main ones is it's really great for event organizing. There's already a lot of event pages on MetaWiki. It's a multilingual wiki. Uh, so that could be a great place for you to test our V1 that we'll be releasing in the next few months. Um, if you would like to be one of the V1 testers, you can also let us know now in the chat. You can contact us later. You can reach out to us in Telegram, and we can give you more updates on V1 and how that will work. Thank you ever so much. I'm going to use that for sure. That's great to hear. Another comment I'll read out loud. Jan, I love that we think about events at all because today they're either manual wiki text or off wiki. But it would be great if we were collaborating on one tool. I think WMDE is investing in diff. Well, this is really great to know. This is also really aligned with our vision is that um, there's some stuff that currently exists for edits on Wiki, but of course that really um, is more geared to people who feel really comfortable uh, creating and managing events on Wiki or people who are especially interested in targeting participants who are experienced themselves. But we're seeing that there's a lot of organizing activity that's already going on off Wiki, uh, either due to maybe the organizer feeling more comfortable in those spaces or them feeling like participants can't easily onboard to on Wiki flows and processes. So our hope is if we simplify these experiences, then more people can do the organizing and their event work on Wiki, which is better, of course, for the movement as a whole. Um, and as for, again, the calendar part, that's something that we can totally explore and work out together in the future. Um, so it's good to hear uh, about how WMDE is thinking about it as well. Um, and we've also been talking with WMDE in our current work. So with event registration, even we've already been talking with WMDE. So we'll continue that collaboration uh, with also the new tools we build. Uh, we only have a few minutes left. We have four minutes left. So if people have any last questions, please, please share them.
if not, I guess we can wrap things up. Um, so uh, thank you so much for joining our session. We really see this again as the beginning of us creating and improving a lot of tools. So we strongly encourage you to join us um, in this process, join our subscription list, join our Telegram group, share feedback in the Google form or on the talk page. Um, reach out to any of us in the team. We would love to hear from you. And thank you so much for coming to our session. So <laughs> I guess goodbye. Thanks, everyone.